The landscape of healthcare delivery is changing, and it's changing rapidly, and the need for efficient and high standards of service continues to grow. Currently, the focus of care is on creating value for patients, which goes beyond waste reduction and administrative savings. Interprofessional collaboration, or IPC for short, can be considered as one of the different strategies to achieve these goals and more. During this, during this session, I would take the audience with me on a discourse of the why, the what and how of interprofessional collaboration. My name is Jamie Busari. I'm a consultant pediatrician at the Horatio Hospital in Aruba and an Associate Professor of Medical Education at Maastricht University. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you. Dear colleagues, I hope all is well. I'm addressing you from Aruba as the ECU conference that was planned to take place in Utrecht as of now has been cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are all facing trying times at this point in time. From lockdowns to physical distancing and the new norm of moving around in public spaces wearing protective face gears. The topic of my presentation today is about the value of interprofessional collaboration in our daily practices. The title as it states, is united we stand, divided we fall. The need for more interprofessional collaboration in our healthcare systems. So, let us start with the definition of interprofessional collaboration, at least from my perspective. And I'll use the definition as described by the Canadian Interprofessional Healthcare Collaborative. IPC is a partnership between a team of health providers and patients in a participatory collaborative model and a coordinated approach to share, to share decision making around health and social issues. It entails cooperation, cooperation among stakeholders with their patients and administrators. It involves communication and joint decision making to ensure that the best available evidence is used to guarantee the best available quality of care. It requires coordination, coordination of services, coordination of decisions and resources. There should be shared responsibility, all for one, one for all, and autonomy that empowers the individual healthcare providers to bring out the best using their knowledge and expertise for the best quality to our patients. There should be trust and respect both within and among the different professional groups and stakeholders in relation to the patients they are serving. Interprofessional collaboration does away with stereotypes, breaking down the barriers that separate teams from one another, from one another, and hindering collaboration. It acknowledges hierarchies and how these can be put to, can be put to use to guarantee the best available service for our patients. And ultimately, it results in optimal patient outcomes with true value in within the, in the perspectives of the, pe the people we are serving. So in summary, IPC is a state of a shared responsibility that involves the facilitation of dialogue among stakeholders, both the providers and consumers of care, as well as the facilitators of care, the integration of different perspectives and expertise, and also the collaborative planning of services around our patients for the, Pope, for the purpose of exceptional patient care. So why is interprofessional collaboration so important? Why is it a topic for discussion? Why is it so essential for me to be talking about it today with you? Inter IPC 
from my perspective, is essential because of the complexity that we are facing in the, deli in the delivery of high quality accessible care to all consumers in our communities. It's important because we're faced with a financial puzzle of how to manage and source all the different aspects of healthcare delivery, delivery that we need to cater for all these requirements that our society is demanding from us. And thirdly, we need to provide healthcare service in an integrated fashion such that there is reduced waste and that targeted healthcare responses are accessible to our patients. This brings me to the concept of value in our healthcare systems. Because if we're able to achieve, if we're able to, 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 to um, solve the issue or address the issue of complexity in healthcare, the financial puzzle, and achieving integrated healthcare services, then we should be able, then we should be talking about the concept of value. There is a need of healthcare services that provide measurable value, true value. And the question is, how do we do this? Healthcare systems that exemplify an efficient amalgamation of our clinical, administrative, and supportive services demonstrates evidence of innovative and evidence-based training and research and has a demonstrable impact on the quality of care in terms of the costs for healthcare delivery and accessibility to services within our communities. It brings me to the concept of value-based healthcare delivery as described by Michael Porter and Harvard Business School professor in 2006. He described value-based healthcare delivery using four pillars of care. One, he said, is about how efficient a patient feels his or her ailment has been handled by the system. How the providers of care perceive that the process works for them. How the provision of training and research contributes to innovation and improvement of services provided in point one and two above, where one does not hinder point two. And finally, how effective the hospital administration is managing its costs and generating revenue while achieving and sustaining all the three aforementioned points as described above. There are conditions, hence, that are, required, that are needed to achieve or sustain those four points. These conditions include creating value for patients and not just lowering costs. Because the more we focus on containing costs, the more we create costs, paradoxically. These conditions mean that it go that providing value-based healthcare delivery is more than just waste reduction and administrative savings, and that the best way to contain costs is to improve the quality of services we're providing. It goes further to clearly show that healthcare delivery has to be organized around medical conditions over the full cycle of care. In other words, integrated practice units. The value we're providing should be able to be measured universally and also reported consistently and regularly. That these results are measured at the level of service and are created for patient outcomes. And the primary goal should be value and not just access to care. Furthermore, there should be hierarchy in the outcomes of value-based healthcare delivery where the achievement of the healthy status is higher than just the process of recovery, which is even higher than just sustaining, sustaining health. We should also focus on reimbursement of, to the stakeholders, to the providers of care, which should be in alignment with value and should also reward innovative healthcare services. And finally, as you've noticed within, during this period of COVID-19, 
there sh we should invest more in information technology, which should enable the restructuring of our healthcare delivery systems, measuring results using big data, but bearing in mind that this on its own is not the solution. So that brings me to the next part of my conversation with you, which is what are the pillars of interprofessional collaboration? How do, if you talk about IPC, what should be those factors or what, what are the factors <coughs> that define our in, in interprofessional collaboration? One of them is the team culture, and the other is the context of our healthcare environments. When I say team culture, what defines our team culture include the leadership, the philosophy of care, and the relationships between the teams that constitute the team, the relationship between the teams that, that define the culture. And with respect to the context of healthcare environment, this refers to the practice of services, and both the informal and formal ways of communication. With respect to team culture, I will use the research we con conducted to understand the perspective of interprofessional co clinicians and the interactions that define effective interprofessional teams. What we discovered that as the, as the elements that define team cultures are the individual professional cultures or ideations. What defines groups of professionals? What defines the community of practices and the subcultures that defines their behaviors and the way they interact with themselves and with other members outside of their direct teams? Accountability being the process of justifying the actions and the decisions that are being taken based on the best available evidence and taking responsibility for both the merits and the failures of such actions with the aim of providing safe and qualitative high care but at the same time the opportunity for learning. All of this which have to take place within safe environments. What defines a team culture is the patient-centeredness in the goals in what they want to achieve as a team. And also, within the process of focusing on patients, the process of empowering patients to be part of the team and not just the healthcare providers being the stakeholders who define the culture of the team. So in other words, what defines a team culture is not just the healthcare providers, but also the healthcare consumers. With respect to the context of healthcare environment, we also did a study to understand the impact of the IPC on the quality of care. And we examine this within the context of a resource-limited healthcare environment. What we discovered is that there are still silos existent in many of our healthcare systems, which are unfortunately still determining the context of healthcare, of how healthcare is being provided. These silos have to be broken down. And we have to refocus on building teams, teams that demonstrate exchange of ideas, that show that there is assistance across and within groups, that there is trust, and that everyone is focusing on achieving a common goal, a common success, and in the process of collaboration, inspiring one another to achieve that goal. The context also showed that there, that there is variety, and with that variety comes with that variety comes richness. Variety, they say, is a spice of life. So is it in our 
healthcare teams into professional healthcare teams, where the different variety, the different inputs create that amalgamation, that Picasso that determines the ultimate quality of service that is being provided by that team. It also ensures that there is judicious use and application of resources. However, that being said, one cannot ignore the fact that despite having these ambitious goals, there is still an elephant in the room that is making the success of interprofessional collaboration very difficult in our healthcare systems. And what is that elephant in the room? The issues that are evident, but we, most organizations try to ignore or pretend are non-existent, are the complexity of care and services that we tend to think we can change all of a sudden. Well, in essence, we need to accept and acknowledge and appreciate that our healthcare systems are complex and are difficult to change overnight. Our healthcare systems are characterized by various stakeholders that include patients, care, service users, complex systems, different structures that have been built over, over the years to provide the service that we've enjoyed until the last 10, 20 years. It's based on backgrounds and beliefs that have grown over the years and that have been that are rigid and very difficult to break down and the limited resources and finance to fund the the changes we are we are trying to achieve that we think we that we, we that we uh, have um, uh, discovered we need to provide high care high high standards and qualitatively good care a uh, standard of care to our patients. We should not forget that there's a lot of fragmentation in our healthcare services. Of course, a topic that we're trying to address with interprofessional collaboration. We see that, as it's demonstrated in, mo in many healthcare organizations, where patients are sent to multiple departments for a single condition where they have to repeat their histories, several investigations and procedures, where they tend to get conflicting advice from the different state healthcare professionals, the silo specialities for a single healthcare problem, and the breakdown in communication or blockages due to the fact that the different that there are different organ different, um, different specialties, different departments where the patients have to find their way through the different, the complex systems that the patients have to navigate through to get the quality, to get the services they need. Finally, another elephant in the, cast, in, in, in the room is the way we see the world and our own predefined ideas, um, um, uh, values, um, um, uh, views of life which all result in, a res in resistance, resistance to change. This could be cultural by saying it won't work here. It could be personal because you can't see what's in it for me. Or it could even be intellectual where you don't get it or you don't see the bigger picture of why change or IPC for that matter is important. So, looking at the challenges as stated, I've taken you through why we need interprofessional collaboration. The value conversation being what IPC can help us achieve.
taken us through the barriers to interprofessional co um, collaboration, complexity, appreciating it. But let's now zoom in to specific disadvantages that many of the um, skeptics might argue I might use to argue against IPC. Some may say, well, there's a relative, relatively lack of high quality evidence of its effectiveness, or argue that the costs of, implement, of implementing IPC are too high and actually exceed the benefits that we <clears throat> probably want to get or gain out of it. It results in conflict in values and loyalties, for example. And that those who are not included within such teams are further isolated. Arguments could be that through IPC, we're forcing people together who have never had experience of interprofessional education, not to mention interprofessional collaboration. And importantly, that IPC could result in more frustration and professional mistrust, especially in situations where these are pre-existent. The bar barriers can exist to IPC as a result, some could, which could be structural or procedural, financial, in terms of the funding mechanisms, resource flow, the status of legitimacy, and could also be professional, as we see in the competing ideology of self-interest and the differences between specialties and expertise, especially in condition situations where funds are limited. But having talked about the disadvantage, the disadvantages, what are then the advantages of IPC? The proponents argue that IPC pro creates signposts for appropriate care. It makes it much easier for the care consumer to navigate and find those who can best help them in one location. It's more efficient, it reduces wastes, it saves time because all the members of the team are usually close together and are interacting with one another in a very efficient and swift way. It's supportive and satisfying for members of the interprofessional team and creates environments, safe working environments for the members. It avoids duplication but also broadens the perspective beyond that of your own domain or specialty. As the saying goes, if the only thing you have is a hammer, then everything you see will appear to you as a nail. IPC broadens your perspective by the input each individual member gets from the other member, the other professional who, within that team who brings a totally different perspective to the table. There's a lot of knowledge transla translation dissemination and sharing of best practices and all of this bring me to my conclusion where I believe that interprofessional collaboration contributes to the improvement of the quality of healthcare across the board. It contributes to the creation of new professional cultures by exposing us to other communities of practice and other ways of 
providing care. It embraces generational changes and impacts healthcare delivery, but it also improves and creates awareness about the importance of certain elements that are necessary for high standards of healthcare and safe communities of practice. These include communication, respect, civility, diversity in the delivery of our healthcare services. And with that, let me just end with this video clip that sort of captures the importance of my narrative with you. Oh, just a disclaimer, I don't have shares with Coca-Cola. But I hope you get the message that together, everybody achieves more. I just want to thank you for your attention. And it's been an honor being able to share my thoughts on the value and importance of interprofessional collaboration for our healthcare systems. Thank you very much.